G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on a map that we have not seen in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mongolian Heights. Things are a little bit different on Mongolian Heights now and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of action we're going to have in this game because I'm confident we're going to see a nice little blend of water. Maybe a little bit of land if you're lucky as well. Let's get into it. Spawning. In the west side of the map, playing as the English in the color green, we've got Lash. And on the east side of the map, in the color orange, playing as the Holy Roman Empire, we've got Core. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps out with the traction of the video. And already we've got ourselves a nice little mirror beginning to occur in the middle of the map. We've got a dock for each player on each side and of course it is split off by this central crossing and you know what that means that means that we can have a nice little wall down the middle to protect ourselves from it now it's curious to see that both players are electing to go for the dock um i, I remember the last time i i think not the last time but definitely the the game i remember the most from this map is the game that i casted it was lee knock i can't remember who he was against he was against somebody good i can say that much have a look at this we've got three vills moving out is he what's he looking to do drop down an early outpost potentially um, but I remember just watching Lee Nock. He was playing the Chinese. And basically the way that he played it was, he said, you can take the middle. I don't care. I'm just going to go for three TC Song Dynasty. Boom. Uh, and the, the effect was that if he'd gone for water, he would have slowed himself down. Whereas by not going for water, he's, he's at, at speed. The difference I would say here is that for Core on the Holy Roman Empire, this is only going to enhance his opening because he wants to just get to Imperial, right? Like, that's the Holy Roman Empire story. That's the way that you play the civilization. You go to Imperial Age uh, and you look to try and get that Swabia up ASAP, and this is just going to enhance that. However, when it comes to Lash's side, I'm a little bit curious about his approach here. Obviously, going for water early is, is just going to be almost necessary in situations like this. And we see the villagers jump inside that outpost. I like how they got a nice little shot off first. It's going to throw a mill down next to these these uh, fishing boats. The first one will go down. Second one also might go down here. I think it will definitely. So al already two worker kills picked up here for Lash. So he's feeling very good about himself this early on. We can see the villager is going to be moving towards the north side here. I suspect we might have Core looking to drop down a second uh, dock up towards this northern position. Definitely the right call here. Uh, you can see that already, you know, Lash has invested 150 wood here. He's already got that back just by taking out those two fishing boats. So maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit late, I guess you could say, with regard to core and actually getting out those, uh, getting those fishing boats out of safety. So let's talk a little bit about Lash and what his plan will be. Because the most common thing you see from the English... I mean, realistically, it's, it's a fast Imperial, right? That's not just because we watch a lot of Divine DFP games. It's just we see a lot of English players looking to go Imperial. There's a lot of big things that happen in the Imperial Age for the English. Most notably, Enclosure Technology is that one that we always look to try and pick up as soon as we can. But I'm curious to see what direction Lash takes, whether he goes into a second TC or whether he just looks to make a couple of units, get them out on the map, and then just go up to Castle Age. And I think when you've got a an opening like this on the water, you want to try and play to its strength. And I think that that is definitely the castle edge. If, you, if you're going to go for a second TC early on, I think it's just best not to beat around the bush and just go straight for that second TC. Because if you delay that second TC by a minute or even, you know, even 40 seconds, then you're losing out on three villages, two villages for the rest of the game. Whereas fishing boats, well, we know what happens with them. They do eventually fall off. But we'll have to wait and see exactly how he looks to utilize those resources as the age-ups are about to come through. Lash on that west side of the map in the... In the color green, going to be looking to put down... Do we even maybe see an abbey? Could there, is there room for an abbey of kings today? I think there probably isn't. But I'm going to wait with bated breath. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, council hall. Council hall. Ah, why am I surprised? You're playing against the Holy Roman Empire. And naturally, you want to get to Castle Age because of crossbows. And the council hall is just going to further enhance that. So I'm curious to see where he goes from here. The villagers... He's pulled off one, only leaving three villagers on gold. Indicates to me he wants to play it a little bit in feudal. So might be thinking of a wheelbarrow, could be thinking of a double broad axe. That could be the play that he looks to go. So we'll check in with Core and see how he's doing because his economy is starting to boom. Keep in mind that Lash only went for the two fishing boats early on and then moved all of his villagers out towards these shoreline fish. Have a look at this though. Lash now going to start moving his position once again. 
I think that every time this happens, as long as Core just picks up and moves everything to a new dock, he's not losing that much, right? Like the outpost is going to cost him 100 wood together with the dock costing 150. But I think also the fact that you've got four villagers here building means that there's quite a loss of villager seconds as well. But I guess the other thing to remember is that these villagers, if you were to build a dock over here, they might just decide to start walking and uh, and take you down. Uh, but uh, we don't see any villagers in the vicinity, so he will need to be careful. I guess the alternative is that he just looks to come down to the south side, uh, which is exactly what he's going to do. And we can see that the scout will be coming down here. Remember that uh, the docks will do that auto repair as well. So even if you've got a scout in here, it might not be enough to actually kill those fishing boats. So we may need to split these video these uh, these villagers up two by two, and that's exactly where he goes for it. Uh, we'll check in and see how Core's doing as it will be an Arkham Chapel down between the gold and the wood line. Definitely, oh, it, it's a it's a it's a tough arc and chapel it's about the best you could have asked for in this situation age up has now come through for lash on that west side of the map and we can see that the fishing boats are in this nice little position where they're, they're kind of stuck between it and to be honest I, I think it could probably hand into the bottom side of this dock and be absolutely fine so i'm curious to see whether he'll go for that but we can already start to see looks like we've got a galley on the way Core on the other side, instead going to be opting for a demo ship. Oh, we could see some big action coming out from Core here. Is he going to be looking to demo the villagers? That would actually be insane if you if you think about it, because he could just come out at a moment's notice. Let's have a look and see where whether he goes for it. Oh, he doesn't get it, but the outpost takes a fair bit of damage up towards the north, though. He will find both of those villager kills, so Core getting them back, and that is a really nice find there for Core. Mainly because you're killing villagers, you're not killing fishing boats. And sure, fishing boats are nice, uh, but remember, they are they, they don't have that flexibility that the villagers do. So I think that's very, very nice there for Core early on in this game. Another demo going to be coming out. What's he going to look to take out next? He's just going to go for the next outpost. No, he's going again for those villagers. The outpost does get its fortifications coming up, or at least its uh, arrow slits coming up. But remember, behind this... We're going to see Core looking to get towards that castle age. Outpost is down. A barracks thrown down as well. Might be thinking about maybe a minute arm or two. Could be the way. Demo ship once again. You can see just how much he's struggling with this. I think he's going to need to rally down a second demo ship from this top side because the villagers are able to repair up that outpost without too much of a hassle. And you can see he's going to bring those villagers back every single time. He's actually just going to leave the one villager down here to repair this outpost up. He's just going to continue to expect more and more demo ships. But he will get the villager. And that's going to be another worker kill now for Core. I, th I, I think... No, has it been... It hasn't been picked up in the middle. Uh, but there's, there's definitely been quite a lot of losses. All right. No sign of longbows at this stage of the game. Which is a bit curious from Lash, right? Like, all you need is one longbow. And you're going to cause a lot of harm to your opponent. Uh, but one thing to note for Lash is he seems a little bit... How do I say this? Anchored. I feel like he's anchored in a quite literal sense here towards the water. Don't lose... Is it don't lose the forest for the trees or something like that? You know, don't lose sight of the goals, right? Like, okay... Water is important, okay? But is it really this important that I throw down, you know, these this extra dock that I get one, two, three boats out and that I'm, I'm you know, really dropping down these outposts? I want to stop my opponent from gathering on the water, sure. But do I really have such a vengeance that I want to get him off completely? And I think the answer is no. Because now what you're going to see happen is there is a massive window for core. It looks like Lash is going to start walling up on this side of the map, he, he will begin to to um, to prevent the passageway through from these prelates. But the reality is he needs units on the map to deny these relics right now. There needs to be units on the map. At the very least, there needs to be, you know, a couple, two longbows and a spearman, something like that, just to try and stop these prelates. Because this is a really good map for the Holy Roman Empire. There's not just five relics on this map. Count them. Count them right now. One, two, three, four... Five, six, six relics on this map. And that means that there is a lot more uh, forgiveness when it comes to the Holy Roman Empire. If you lose a relic on the other side of the map, you're always going to be, you know, well, I've got three relics back at home, so I'm absolutely fine. And I think that's what makes the Holy Roman Empire such a strong civilization on this map. Because if you get three relics as the Holy Roman Empire, you're doing a good job. If you get four, you're doing a great job. You're doing, if you're getting five, there's a problem with your opponent. But if you can get six, <laughs> boy, oh boy, we're going to have to have a chat, my friend. Uh, so hopefully Lash decides to kick it up 
a notch. You can see at the moment that the uh, the Palisade wall is being blocked out here. Unfortunately, it's the middle one as well, which means it makes it a little bit harder to fork his opponent. Uh, but uh, Villager just going to be turning towards that Prelate. And you can see units are rallied down towards this south side. Expect to see a Knight or two. No, it's going to be Men at Arms that are coming out now. The Galley going to be trying to prevent this hole from being uh, being plugged by the Scout. Men at Arms will indeed find that, uh, that Longbow. And you can see the Longbow numbers will start to build. Keep in mind, Lash is still... In that feudal age, Kaw's been in here for quite a while. Now, it's interesting to me that he's gone into Men at Arms rather than going into Knights. Uh, but I guess the reality is he's just uh, a little bit fearful of going into uh, into Spears. Even though it's it's only uh, feudal age Spears, which I don't think is a big issue. And have a look at this. We've got a Hulk up towards the top side that has now come out of the dock for Kaw. So just when you hadn't pushed your opponent off water completely, they decide, you know what? I think we might get back on the water. And as a result, you're going to see this wall not come up. And what does that mean? That means prelates are on the way through. Relic snuck out of the back. We've got ourselves a little bit of a heist coming out right now. The villager running up that hill lost sight in the stealth forest of that prelate. And unfortunately, Lash wasn't paying attention. Now, the wall to the wards of the south has been secured. But the question is going to be whether this prelate is able to hold onto the relic and then make its way back through here. Maybe he goes for a little transport ship shenanigan, or maybe he just looks to siege it down. More men at arms now through the middle. We did see a prelate towards that top side. I don't know exactly where it went. It looks like it may have gone the way of the dodo. I suspect the galley was able to snipe it out. Demo ship coming in and blows up the villager trying to build the wall. Oh, you sneaky, sneaky core right now. White tower of all things going to be thrown down inside the base for Lash. It never feels good to be throwing down a white tower when you're on one TC. Knowing that your opponent may be going Imperial at any stage and you're going to have no response from them. But Lash right now getting caught with his pants down the white tower. Unfortunately, will get up, but villagers will be be lost he's taken out nine workers so far this game needed a nice little garrison there into the white tower remember that uh, white tower garrisons actually do more damage than the town centers do uh they do 10 damage compared to the six damage of the town center so it's really nice you know when you, you can compare that to the fact that you've got men at arms here with five armor you're effectively doing five times the damage uh so that that is a a big factor but he gets another worker underneath the town center this is going very well for core <laughs> Look at this. He's... Wait, did that prelate actually get through, but it just went south instead of going north? Because does, does Kaur know about this relic? He doesn't know about the northern relic. Uh, but he does know <laughs> He does know about the two western relics uh, because, uh, well, he's got them. Second TC is now coming up for Lash. Interesting decision to go for the White Tower, but still add in a second TC. I think it's definitely the right call. I'd love to see him even add in a third TC just to match this inevitable Swabia. The problem that you're going to have is your opponent's got relics. That's the big deal. Um, and this is the problem. And I, I, I think that might have been the issue for Lash in that he focused... Mm, transport ship. He, he focused on the water quite a lot. Tried to force his opponent really off the water rather than just prevent the gathering. And I think that was the big issue. Um, but have a look at this. Lash has no idea about the transport ship. A couple of crossbows out. Look at this. He's actually got a little bit of a route going on. He will run into these prelates if they are still sitting where they once were. The question is, has Kaur begun the, the long march towards the transport? They get spotted. They get spotted. Both of the prelates. He could look to get in close and then go for a walla lol. One gets taken out. Second one getting focused down as well. And unfortunately, the great heist was not to be as the prelates go down to the crossbows. Very well done by Lash, and great foresight to know that, hey, my opponent has taken my relics, because you, when, when you are playing and you scout a, re a relic, it will stay on the map. If that relic disappears, that means that your opponent has picked that relic up. So really nice foresight there of him to know that, hey, those relics are missing. I need to locate them. So he's done a great job with that. Very well played. On that south side, though, we'll check in with Core Now, expect to see more prelates coming out exactly like we do into the transport ship. He'll be looking to come across, do himself a nice little bit of a jump -a and get over there. Meanwhile, towards Lash's side, the monastery has only just come up. Have a look at this. The villagers have only just started gathering the stone, so it's going to be a little bit delayed. But my, my problem here is that, look, three relics are, are fine, right? Like, if you get three relics, you're doing great. Have a look at the gold that he's got right now. Corey's in absolute wonderland. He's having a field day out here. 
And this is just with three relics. And this is pretty much the guaranteed for this map for the Holy Roman Empire. If, if I'm honest with you, I think this might be the best map for the Holy Roman Empire. It's kind of wild when you think about just how good this is for them. Now they've got a free sacred site that they can take as well. Very, very nice. Sacred sites have been switched out a little bit. I'm sure you will remember the days of the sacred site spawning right down here in the corner, up here on the other side. Really good for the Delhi. Uh, not so good for everybody else, but uh, it looks like Lash not going to be allowing it. He is hunting prelates today. Definitely feels like he's a bit of the prelate hunter. But speaking of prelates, have a look at this. We've got two more relics picked up over in that west corner, and the Swabia will be coming down. A weird, bit of a weird wood line on this backside. I guess he probably could have gone for somewhere over here, but to be honest, I don't even think he can get it in because of the berries. Uh, so this is probably about the best spot you could put it. Uh, so I think he's going to be very happy with this, but interesting to note, there's not a whole lot of farmland. Normally by this stage of the game, you're seeing a fair bit more farms coming out, but at the moment, he's sitting on nine farms, which isn't the most. Transport ship will get... Look at this. He's actually spotted out the transport ship. Damn that ship! Oh, my God. The demo... <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, my Lord. The demo ship. Did... <laughs> you are playing with fire right there, my friend, Lash. Jeez, Louise. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even realize he was going for it. He's just looking... He is hunting today with these demo ships. Oh my gosh. Expect to see a couple more villagers. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come down into this corner. I'm curious. Yeah, Lash wouldn't have line of sight of this, so he could easily pull them over if he wanted to. How many units was that? That must have been double digits. Those crossbows were all just chilling out on, on the edge of the, the river, enjoying the view. Kor is in the Imperial Age now, and he has just bought himself so much time. His opponent now, Lash, looking for... I don't even know what he's looking for here at this stage. Like, there's no units in production. There's not a lot of villagers on gold. He's transitioning to farms. And see, this is the consequence of going for that early food. Like, sure, it's nice to go for this early food, but if you don't convert this into something, that's when it becomes an issue. And that's why I think going for, like, a fast castle into knights makes a lot of sense. If you can go fast castle with the white tower into knights, add the second TC a little bit later, right? Like, get four, five, six knights out. There's the third TC now coming down. So definitely the right call. My fear is that it just might just be happening a little bit too late. And it's all from the water. So don't let the water be a trap for you. If you're going to take the water, I feel like you really want to try and use it as quickly and as effectively as you can. Don't try and sit back if you've got the water. Try and turn those units, or try and turn that, that those resources into units. And have a look at this. We've got more docks coming up towards this top side. Speaking of uh, docks, though, is he really trying to sneak these? No way is he trying to actually sneak these the, the long way around. He is... Oh, gosh. Look at this. He's not even going to be able to get through on the backside. You can see he's got the, the rally point set in here. But I don't think you're going to be able to get through. He is actually going for an incredible heist right now. He's got a slight score advantage. The Swabia is pumping. Town Center is still going as well. So he's got the equivalent of four TCs pumping units. Doc in the middle. He's just trying to sneak docks on every single corner of this map. That one down on the south side did eventually go down. I tell you what, I think you might need some long distance siege to actually get rid of it. And now Core, he's going to be scouting out the hard way with these prelates, looking to try and get these relics back towards the base. And unfortunately, it looks like he is going to have to go the long way. Now, will Lash, will Lash see these? Uh, it looks like the White Tower won't be able to actually take them out. So he will need to bring units. But the question is going to be whether he can actually get them there in time. Because we know that there's units on this south side. They've neutralized or looking to neutralize this sacred site. Have a look. He's just chilling. He's not going to chop through. Surely not. What is going on with these prelates? He's act is he got he's doing a little bit of a relic delivery, I think. Horsemen are coming out. Looks like a large number of horsemen on the field at the moment, up to 11. And there, finally, it looks like these prelates will eventually enter line of sight for Lash. Does he actually see them, though? That is going to be the question. Very, very quickly. In... And straight away, out, and the villagers have been pulled. He knows. He spotted them. He sees the tandem prelates working towards that north side. There's a sheep up there as well. Why the hell not? And up towards the north, the Carrick has now arrived, looking to spoil the party of all buildings in the vicinity. Unfortunately, the Tempo ship is quite good against Carricks. That's a lot of resources that you've just thrown down the guzzler right there. What are we talking? 600 resources. Wow. Okay. Well, in the middle of the map, it looks like Core will be caught... Horsemen and men-at-arms forced back. Prelates still towards that north side. The great escape. 
Holy Roman Empire edition. It's happening. He's trying to secure these relics. He's trying to get them out. The Wingard Palace comes down in the back of the base. Lash at the 20 minute mark just misses out on that qualification of Fast Imperial. So doesn't get the achievement today, unfortunately. Will he find those prelates? Oh no. I see a transport ship in queue. I, lo I love that he's committing to this bit so much. This is absolutely ludicrous. Remember this whole time he's just on three relics, right? Like, and he's still, he's still making mogul moves over there. But when you get to five relics, like you're pretty much re all over Red Rover. That is it. And now on that north side, after a long, hard journey, the prelates finally, oh, hold. The, f the prelates finally make it back onto home soil. And with that, Core looks to secure five out of the six available relics. Culverin in the center of the map, just working on their working on their accuracy, work, working on their firing game. Just taking out some uh, some pot shots here in the middle on these uh, on these fishing boats. Dude, uh, not gonna lie, the, the uh, attack speed on these Culverin is very nice now. This is great. Uh, the only issue that you're going to have is repair is going to become a much larger problem. Well, not problem, but mechanic, I, I guess is the point, the, the way I'd say it. You know, people are going to be looking to repair stuff up a lot more than before. And I think that's a, that's probably a good thing, right? Like, that's a, that's an increase overall to the skill cap. Uh, but we do now, well, the skill ceiling. Uh, but, uh, all right, double prelates on the way back. They're just going to be dropping off at... The, uh, the Regnitz Cathedral. I was going to call it the Regnitz Casino. Jeez, is that two gambling references in two videos right now that Drongo's got? I think it might be. Anyway, Culverins are, are going to be able to clear out this space, and it means that the demo ships have got no chance of surviving against these Culverins, especially with the new attack speed numbers. Hold on a minute. How much damage are these guys actually doing? They're doing a fair bit of siege damage here. Not going to lie. It's like, what, 35? That, that's a meaningful amount of siege damage. Uh, now, of course, that's probably not with uh, your your upgrades and whatnot but uh you know get chemistry in and you'll be doing a, a fair bit more as well but now towards the opponent's side of the map enclosures starts to come through here for lash he's on 115 population compared to core on 157 elite horsemen are through elite men at arms are through spearmen have been upgraded though for lash and he's starting to move into hand cannon he's expect to see those those wingard rangers on the way shortly and now towards that front we do begin to see the Spearman getting pretty effective shots in. Crossbow's forced back. Needs to focus down with the hand cannoneers, these men at arms. Make sure that these spears are doing well, but it looks like he might be overwhelmed here. And it's a classic case of just not being able to get those resources spent fast enough. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Imagine right now another 10 spears, another five hand cannoneers on this front. That's exactly what you can have if Lash had spent his resources, but unfortunately, it's not going to be the case, and he's just going to tap out. The game gets called there at the 23-minute mark with Core pulling off an insane W, a wonderful relic heist, and, of course, an insane demo ship as well. That was incredible. The Holy Roman Empire are wonderful as a civilization. My son's just walked in. Hey, buddy, how you doing? <laughs>